Part 1. Bell Plantation, Charles City, Virginia, 1850. Chapter 1. The Bell Plantation. Mama believed that the full moon was the most fertile night of the month and that everything she touched held God's power. Each full moon, she dragged me out in the middle of the night with her to hunt for roots, plants, seedlings, and rare blossoms to use for healing. I did not understand why God's power could not be found during daylight hours, and as I trudged behind her, the March cold overwhelmed me. Even my thick wool shawl was no match against the country freeze. Fear of the woods made my feet clumsy, and I tripped over fallen sticks, scratched my shins on the spiky brush, and bumped my head on low-hanging branches. Mama, on the other hand, moved with skill and confidence, like the earth parted a path and presented the way for her. Even in the dark, she knew where to stop for herbs and how to avoid the dangerous ones. We had only a small lantern to guide us, and when I asked her how she knew where things grew, she responded, my gut be my light. We slipped through the thicket, past the drafty cabins, where the field hands slept on pallets stuffed with hay and husk. I heard dry coughs and a low whine from a hungry baby. Farther down towards the James River, we traveled through the clearing where we met on Sundays for church. Then over the hill, along the side of the cemetery, peppered with sticks to honor our dead. As we traveled deeper into the woods of the plantation, the thick forest blocked the light of the moon. I could hear the growls and grunts of unseen animals and fretted over running into hungry raccoons or red foxes or stepping on a poisonous snake. I tried to clear the worry from my mind as the land flattened out, but then something pricked my ankle. Before I could call out, Mama stopped suddenly and reached for my hand. Hey guys, I'm back again and I'm here to do a review of Yellow Wife by Sadiqua Johnson. All right. This is a book that came into my hands like just by accident. So uh, Simon and Schuster came into my DMs on Instagram and they were like, oh, you know, you know, we'd like you to uh, wondering if you would like to review these books. <clears throat> so there was like three or four books there. I didn't want to read that. It was just some stuff that I was just like, ain't nobody got time for that. I quickly went and looked on their site and I went under their fiction list and I saw this and I said, I want to read this. So I told them, I said, yeah, I want to read this. Is it possible? And the girl said, sure, no problem. We'll send you a copy over right now. So the copy got here a lot quicker than I expected and <clears throat> I decided to put this on my TBR for Read So Lit and I read it. It was one of the first books that I finished and my goodness, this book right here is so good. All right, so first, this is a slave novel, so got to get your mind right. I ain't lying about that. So I'm sure some of you are going to be like, oh my God, another slave novel. I don't want to do it. Like, can we read something else? Okay. Be that as it may, I still urge everyone to pick this book up because it's just a different perspective than what we're used to when we're reading slave novels. This book is literally a page turner you will get so sucked in and will not be able to put it down. This book has everything you need. It has mystery, suspense, you know, it just has everything. Because it is the real page turner. I am not joking when I say that because literally I could have read this book in one sitting. I could have read it, I picked it up, I think it was at nine o'clock or 9 30 in the evening and I must have read all the way until midnight and I was getting ready to push to 1 a.m. I was like girl go to bed you got to go to work tomorrow so I read like to 1 a.m. and then I shut the book and then the very next day when I finished working I finished off 
the yellow wife. So that gives you an idea of how good it really is. This follows a character whose name is Phoebe Dolores Brown. I love that name. Phoebe Dolores Brown is a slave, but she is a product of the master and a slave. And she grows up uh, on the plantation fairly sheltered and with the idea that she will eventually, when she gets to the age of 18, be released and become free and be able to study at a, at a girl's school in Massachusetts. So it's with that in mind that Phoebe goes about her life on the plantation, this very sheltered life, where she doesn't have to do hard labor. She very has to do very light, light chores. Her mother pretty much protects her because of the relationship she has with the master. So what happens? Clearly, Phoebe is going to turn 18 and you already know clearly she's not going to be set free. That's all I'm going to tell you. Now I'm going to get to the goodies. So the goodies. The best thing about this book is that the author did a very good job of combining the fiction, the historical fiction side with actually the telling of the story. So they were on a holiday in Richmond, Virginia and have anything to do. So they said, let's just go and see what there is to see in the town. So they found this walk that you could do through, or should I say along a slave trail. So in going along the slave trail and reading the little signs as they went along, she came across a story about a jailer, a white man who was married to a mulatto woman and was raising their their four children on this property that was called the jail and that this man was one of the biggest slave owners uh, and uh, sellers of slaves and he had a horrible reputation in the state. So she started to read more into this historical event and she said I'm gonna write about it. So what she did was she put a face on that mulatto woman through Phoebe Dolores Brown. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat things in a sense. I'm just going to come right out and say it. There are some parts of this book that are like when I say you got to get your mind right, you got to get your mind right. <laughs> um, th this is not for the faint of heart in some places. So beware. But besides that, the author does a great job with talking about colorism, talking about uh, the differences uh, between slaves, talking about the idea of freedom, uh, talking about the idea of how freedom can be connected to your children, to your lifeline, and how a, the lifeline that connects a mother to her child is in slavery something that, you know, that is like the first thing that is broken. You know, like a, a slave woman could lose their child at any moment for whatever reason. She talks a lot about that. She talks a lot about the idea of being free in your mind. And the other good thing that she does is the character of Phoebe Dolores Brown. We see her in the beginning as a naive, sheltered, mulatto slave. And we see how she develops over time. And I felt like that was the best because we sometimes don't always see the full flower growth of, of, of a character sometimes. And then we are left a little bit disappointed. Whereas this book doesn't do that at all. It goes fully through her development and it comes around full circle. So I say this is a perfect book. This is really a perfect book. It's it's quite astounding. Sadiqa Johnson, her previous novels were either chick lit or contemporary fiction. And to say that she pulled this off and to this extent is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So it's a book not to be missed. 
I had the pleasure of interviewing Sadiqa Johnson over on my Instagram. So if you're on Instagram, have a possibility to go and check out Brown Girl Reading, which is my page over on Instagram. Go and check it out. We had a great one hour chat about the book. We tried not to give too many spoilers, but there are some spoilers in it. So maybe wait and go check it out once you've already read the book. But really, really good. I am looking forward to more good stuff from Sadiqa Johnson. She's currently working on a new book. So that's all I have for you today. I'll be back real soon with another video. Bye.